Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, today we are going to learn about articulation points of our Arabic alphabets. So this is going to be an introduction, plus we'll be looking at uh, the first major area. Okay, so what is makhraj? Okay, makhraj, it's a word that has been originated from the word kharaja. Okay, kharaja, it means exited. He exited. And this word, makhraj, means point of articulation or point of exit. Okay, so basically it means from where, from which point of exit a letter is being articulated. Okay, so we call it either the articulation point or the point of exit. Okay, the plural of it is called makharij. Okay, makharij is the singular and makharij is the plural. So we're going to look at the articulation points for 28 letters and there are 29 Arabic letters including Hamza. Okay, the major areas of articulation is where uh, we'll be learning the five major areas. Okay, there are a total of five major areas and uh, in total we have 17 makhraj points for 28 letters. Okay, so total we have 17 makhraj points for 28 letters and these 17 points are We'll be looking through one by one, but the first, firstly, we're going to look at the major areas. Okay, the first major area is called Al Jauf, which means the empty space in throat and mouth. And we have Al Halq, it means the throat. We have Al Lisan, the third major area is called the tongue. We have Al Shafatan, it means the two lips. Okay, and we have al khayshum which means the nasal cavity or the nasal passage. So these are the five major areas and from each area we have certain number of makhraj points and we have certain number of letters emitting from it. So if you add up all these points, points means the makhraj points, okay. Uh, it will add up to 17 and the total number of letters if you add up it will add up to 28 okay so we have just looked through the wordings right so this is what it looks inside our mouth and uh, this is al jauf the blue and green area is called al jauf which is the empty space the blue area is al halq okay the blue area up until here it's called al halq and then we have al lisan over here the tongue we have al shafatan the two lips and we have al khayshum uh, it can be called as nasal cavity or the nasal passage okay and over here this arrow it's showing the roof of the mouth this is the roof of our mouth okay so to begin with we'll begin with al jauf empty space in throat and mouth so from here we have the articulation point for three mud letters okay there are three mud letters it means the lengthened letters the lengthened letters where we will elongate the vowels okay and this makhraj for al jawf it's called al makhrajul muqaddar it means approximate makhraj point okay why do we call it approximate because uh, it comes from the empty area right the throat and mouth of uh, it comes from the empty area of the throat and mouth so the sound will not be touching any parts of the throat or any parts of the uh, the mouth area inside so that's why it's called makhra, uh, approximate makhraj point if i were to say specific makhraj point that means you will be hearing me saying that this part of something will be touching this part of something 
and together we know when these two hit the sound is produced so when you are hearing me uh, describing this part it means the Makhraj point is specific because I am specifically saying that this part of the uh, mouth is touching this part of the tongue or something like that so you will know that this is uh, specific but um, for this al jawf all the makhraj point is ma approximate okay so in the mud letter the first mud letter we are looking at is alif sukun okay so all three mud letters are emitted from al jawf okay and the first mud letter is called the alif sukun okay so before we continue on to the next part right i would just like to uh, clear what does the alif sukun means and what the fatha means so basically in arabic there are only three vowels vowels meaning there's only three type of sounds that can be pronounced for each arabic alphabet so the first type is when you're pronouncing the letter with a fatha the sound will go with a, a sound in the end for example over here fatha is a slanted stroke above a letter when you seeing this seeing it in this letter wow wow fatha wa so when you're pronouncing the letter with a fatha the sound will end off with a, a sound this is wa this is sha this is ha this is ha sa da see this single stroke above a letter it's called fatha it will end off with a, a sound so this alif sukun is happens it comes along when we are going to lengthen the sound of the fatha so if we were to lengthen the sound of the fatha which is a you will lengthen it as a so over here it's a ha fatha ha with the alif sukun beside it so you will lengthen the sound ha another example over here is a zal fatha za with alif sukun you say it as the wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad okay so with alif sukun you will lengthen the sound of the fatha okay the next type of vowel is kasra kasra is a single stroke below a letter and the sound will end off with the e sound with the e sound so this fa kasra fi dal kasra di noon kasra ni ha kasra hi so this sound will end off with the e sound and with the ya sukun following it when there's a ya sukun following it we will lengthen the sound of a e to e e so fa kasra fi ya sakina we make it as fi fi di di fi di <clears throat> okay so this is how we lengthen the sound of the kasra next we have the wow sukun which needs to be preceded by a letter with a domma so domma it's a slanted number nine on top of a letter okay so this slanted number nine it's called domma and this domma will have a sound u u so when you're pronouncing a letter with a domma the sound has to end off with a u sound okay here kha domma khu kha domma khu lam domma lu lam domma lu so when you're saying lu you need to pout your lips okay you need to pout your lips lu not lu lu it's lu and for kasra your jaw, lower jaw has to be lowered fi not f f no fi fi di ni fi di ni and for fatha you need to open up your mouth so that the sound is traveling in moderate okay it's not like hey sidin 
and it's not hasidin it shouldn't be going to the two extremes you shouldn't sound slant the sound as hasidin okay and you shouldn't make the sound so thick like hasidin both is incorrect it has to be the sound has to be in the middle and for it to be in the middle we need to open our mouth and make the sound flow through from our vocal cord through our jaw and through our mouth hasidin hasidin either not either or either okay so all of the sound which we elongated has to come from the empty space of our throat and mouth okay over here whichever that i have highlighted are called the mud okay this noon has alif mud this lamb has a wow mud this fa and dal has a ya mud this wow has a alif mud okay so with alif mud you make the sound ah uh, elongate ah uh, wa the uh, wow mud you elongate the sound of the u yadkhuluna yadkhuluna and for the fa and the dal you elongate the kasra sound fi di fi di fi di nillahi afwaja and this lamb there's a mud on the lamb okay whenever there's a shadda it means there are two letters one with a sukun and the other other one with a um, uh, vowel and the vowel one it has a mud so we won't be saying fi di nillahi it's fi di nillahi okay there's an alif sukun after the lamb for this word lafzul jalala the uh the lamb it won't be separated okay the alif sukun won't be separated and written as though similar to this wow it is not it will not be written like that but this how it will look but we will elongate the lamb fi di nillahi afwaja okay so these are the examples now we're going to see where is the jauf what is this jauf i'm keep saying jauf jauf where is this thing coming from so the red arrows is the sound of uh, the mud okay be it the wa or the ya or the alif so this is where the sound goes through so in throat you shouldn't be touching any part of the throat okay you must travel in the sound must travel in the empty space which is the white area and the sound is to go through the mouth okay if you're going to restrict this place if you're going to give pressure on your tongue this is going to close up the gap okay not allowing this sound to go through the mouth area but instead it will go through the nose area where the sound will go like ha sidin ha sidin Okay, the sound if the sound is going through here the nose area which we saw just now al khaishum if it's going to the nasal passage the sound is going to be ne uh, he sidin okay you need to open up your mouth for fatha so that your tongue will be flat and the sound can go through the mouth area and come through your, our lips so ha sidin ha sidin so in the mouth area also it shouldn't be touching anywhere it shouldn't be the sound shouldn't be touching the tongue shouldn't be touching the roof area you shouldn't be restricting your tongue to uh feedy you know this sound if 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 you have any heard anybody saying feedy means you are restricting your tongue uh too much that the sound is uh sounding very odd okay so the, then the sound will travel through our mouth okay so this images shows how our lips has to be placed our lips and our tongue has to be placed when we are pronouncing each of the mud letters so over here from the right side we have the alif mud okay alif mud is the extension or the lengthened sound of a uh. okay you're gonna say uh right so the sound from the bottom of the throat this is where our vocal cord is the sound is produced here 
and you're going the sound gonna travel through the white area it's gonna come through here so if you see the lips it has to be opened okay it has to be opened and from the front it will look like an oval shape okay our lips has to be open in an oval shape but our lips has to be opened if we are not gonna open the sound gone the sound is going to be really weird and odd where it's going to be like ha seeding ha seeding you see it's very weird right but the sound has to come out with full blast ha seeding ha seeding do you see the difference between ha seeding i am not opening my mouth at all ha seeding if i'm gonna open my lips properly the mouth properly where the tongue has to be flat so that the sound will completely come through the mouth area it's gonna be sound like ha ha okay that's how the sound should be for wow doma sorry for the wow mud the sound same from the bottom from the vocal cord has to come through but our lips has to be pouted like this okay our lips has to be pouted like this so that the o sound will be completed okay so for mud you're gonna elongate the sound for two counts minimum so you're gonna say yede hu luna luna so as until you finish the o sound your lips has to be pouted not yede hu luna luna no luna must have the o sound when you are making the mud luna okay the o sound has to be produced for that to be complete you need to pout your lips throughout the pronunciation of the mud okay and for the ya you need to lower down your lower jaw okay i know it's a funny phrase lower down your lower jaw but your lower jaw has to be lowered so that the e sound is pronounced properly and the sound is emitted accurately so uh feedy feedy you can feel you're gonna just put your thumb and your index finger on your left side and the right side of your jaw and you should feel it being lowered when you're pronouncing the kasra fi fi okay when you're gonna say kasra right it's just a far kasra fi the sound will just be lowered fi what you're gonna when you're gonna make the mud sound fi you can see the um, cheeks of your lower jaw it will be lowered fi and even the bone you should feel the bone being lowered fi di fi di and your tongue you shouldn't be restricting the tongue area you shouldn't be making your tongue strong like you know holding it strong and make the sound uh, very odd like fi di no Okay, you have to loosen up your tongue make it freely make the sound uh, travel through freely okay feedy okay do you see the difference between feedy nilahi and feedy nilahi okay this is how the mud sound has to be come out freely okay so alhamdulillah this is uh, what al jawf is in next lesson we will be looking through uh, the second major area which is al halq the throat assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh